So I can talk like you know. They, I've been practicing my acting classes lately. And this is my San Francisco yellow. And the reason I painted it in yellow, I have no idea. <laughs> anyway, so when I got done with this painting, uh, you know, it was sort of interesting. I, I painted uh, on, the, on this particular canvas for about at least three days, maybe four. And I had this very linear thing going on that I've been kind of trying to pull off for um, <laughs> God knows, months, if not a year or two now. Somewhat like my drawings. Like, I, I mean, someday I'm gonna make a painting that looks like one of my drawings, which I, you know, draw with these colored pencils. So it's a lot of lines and a lot of lines of different colors. So anyway, I got, you know, to some point with it and I just looked at it and I said, oh my God, what a pretentious piece of, so, kind of got pissed off, really, and I started, I, I don't even remember exactly what I started, but it probably with that, I think the yellow and then the, this sort of yellowy red, orange mixed together, and I just started smearing around with the idea that I would leave the parts that I liked. And I always liked, which at the time was the, those two green shapes with the purple, um, I thought that worked. That was actually at the bottom of the painting. And I liked the edge on the left, too. I thought those shapes and that drawing. But anyway, I went into it, and you know, I just literally took, I don't, I think this might have been the first one. I literally just took my fingers and I just kind of gouged it out. Because like I said, I've been painting on it for quite a few days. So it's, it, there's a lot of paint on this thing. It was, you know, quarter inch thick, maybe more of paint. Um, and I, you know, I like the way it looked. There's also a nice little surprise, you know, like I get all of a sudden this lavender, uh, which is nice against the yellow. It's still wet. Oh, shit, look at that. <laughs> I gotta stop. What did I just do? <laughs> shit, where did that come from? I just gouged into it somewhere. Maybe, oh, maybe there. Yeah, I knocked that off. Oh, boy. Look at that. Oh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> Where's those napkins? <laughs> anyway, take three. Um, so, like I said, I was, you know, I had gotten a stage where I, I really just was going to completely change it around. At the same time, it isn't as if I, this idea, you might say I save for situations like this, which is I've been working on a lot of configurations of drawing, particularly the drawing in the painting, and all I can say is it, it, it it wasn't working out, it wasn't a success in that sense. But there are parts of it that were really good. So I kind of went and basically covered it up. At the same time I put new things in, just like when I, this was another one, I just sort of really just pulled my hands right through it like three fingers. And again, there's these colors that were underneath. Matter of fact, I don't even remember what I did here, which was this sort of pink and green stripey-like thing, which I thought was really awful. And, you know, I kind of moved a lot of stuff around and, and, it, and it stayed very yellow, which was a little bit surprising, actually, because yellow is a tough color to keep yellow once you start mixing it in with other colors. And, you know, at one stage, this, this edge here, I felt was a little weak. It needed, to, it needed almost kind of like an outline or something to kind of build it up, or I don't know if you'd actually call it build it up, but, uh, you know, and make it a little more defined maybe. Uh, it just didn't work the way it was. And then, you know, I poured some of these shapes, some stuff like in here I wiped down with a rag because I was kind of curious what would start coming through uh, because the underneath painting uh, was very dry at that point. So I could take the surface off for the paint I just put on and I actually kind of smeared this out very dry, like it wasn't that wet. I mean, it was probably about the minimum amount of paint that I could do and still spread it. Um, and then, you know, I kind of started going back into it. I saw things that like, you know, I felt needed a little, you know, resolution, like even putting, like this was kind of just really my hand, little dots. I felt like this transition here wasn't quite right. Um, you know, I had to put a little pink shape here at one point, but it was a little too solid. And I, again, I kind of, I dug into it a little bit just to, just kind of modulate it a little. Um, 
And then, you know, it just kind of, it, it, it actually was funny. I probably, I, I would say that I painted this painting in an hour and a half, two hours, but I'd had this four days of painting on it before, but it came together really fast once I kind of did this. And, it, you know, it, it comes out of a lot of things I've done before where, you know, I didn't feel it was really going that well. And um, I just started pouring down colors. A lot of times I've poured down colors. I'll go with another painting where I thought that's what I was going to do, was I was just going to start smearing them all around, see what I get. But as I poured them out, I really liked the way just the spots, the big, they'd be like big spots looked. So I just kind of left them um, and, and did something more with the rest of the paintings or painting. So, yeah, and so when I got done with it, it was sort of a funny painting too, in two ways. It, 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 it reminded me very much of this yellow that a lot of guys in San Francisco would use. And secondly, um, in a funny way, it's like a painting I really wanted to paint. When I stopped painting the figure and landscapes, and I was doing, yeah, most of the figure and landscapes, um, I wanted to make some abstract paintings, and I started painting with oils, and ah, it, was, it was just kind of mushy. I really, I don't know, it just, just didn't work out. And so I switched to acrylics, and that took me in a whole completely different uh, way of working, and in the end, that turned into sculpture. That was kind of funny how that sort of went from one sort of hard edge-ish sort of stuff to actually making sculpture and shaped canvases. But um, this looked like the painting I should have painted in 1963 if I had had the skill, but I didn't have the skill. So 50, <laughs> I don't want to say 55, 56 years later, here I am doing it. Um, I'm a slow learner. <laughs> Anyway, let's go to some other paintings. Uh, well, this, this is another interesting painting. Um, as far as, again, it, it, has a, it has quite a bit of yellow in it. And yellow is an interesting color. Uh, I, I don't think it's that easy to use. I, I notice a lot of people don't use yellow or stay away from yellow. But the idea, I had an idea about this painting. It was very, very vague. Um, which was, I was going to, pour down with these sort of stripey like things three or four colors that were really pale and I wanted to in some ways it would be so pale and particularly together it'd be very intense it would be like you know you know kind of they're so close in value that uh, it would actually make them uh, intense and then at the same time, I thought somewhere I want to put down, to play off it, a primary, secondary, like, color. Uh, so on the left here, and this comes a lot out of drawings. I mean, there's no real drawing that actually looks like this. But, you know, I've been making, I had been, still probably do make drawings where it's pretty light and then there's something very strong. And that's where this came in. And then on this particular painting, I sort of painted these three um, kind of bars of color on the edge. For whatever reasons, I just felt like that edge wasn't quite right. It needed something there. Maybe even just the fact of a line, you know? Um, and then in it, I came back and even, even like painting these, uh, this yellow, I wanted it, it's funny how it feels. I wanted it to feel different enough of a yellow. At the same time, you, your eye didn't go to it real fast. You saw it kind of in a secondary thing. It also played off against the direction that all the lines were going. Um, and then at one point, I put that black in with these two little colors sort of next to it, which are, you know, and then again, we're kind of getting into a spatial thing where literally this is on top of the black, but the black is so strong, it, it very much feels like it, it's on top of that surface. But I also pushed it back by putting something just as light as the background in the foreground. So it's a kind of play, almost ambiguous, of, of the space. Um, you know, and there's even a little yellow 
uh, blob there that's uh, basically straight out of the can, uh, yellow. Yeah, that's you know pretty much that one. Then you know, this blue paint is kind of interesting in that um, I painted three paintings to get to this painting. Each one of them looked pretty good. I th there wasn't one time that I didn't think I could have stopped and it would have been a pretty successful painting. But I wasn't really that happy with it. And so I painted this other painting that, let's see, kind of going towards this. It's probably the second version was somewhat like this, if it was lighter. And in the end, I didn't like the light blue. I wanted it to be a darker blue and, and a series of dark blues. So I kind of went back into it. Now at the same time, I saved a lot of stuff. like. This sort of down here, you might almost call like an opening. Like I sort of see this as a big field of blue with this being underneath it. Same with this, and this is probably the, the second version. This is, this is a, a green sort of blue passage. This, the, this sort of reddish brown all was in it. Same with this, as much as I covered it up a little more than I had and um, I put that corner kind of, I don't, I don't remember if any of that was actually in the, the first or second version, but I sort of did that to kind of like just harmonize a little with the rest of it. Plus I thought sort of that was cool to play with the corner there. Um, and then somehow I dry, I poured this pink and um, well first I poured this green uh, shape out and um, it wasn't really quite what I wanted. So I came back with the pink, and the pink went down really nice. This is one of these things where it was just dry enough that the pink didn't go all over the place. At the same time, um, I, was, I was able to, you know, kind of, it sort of melted in. It did spread a bit, but just enough. So that's an interesting thing just in, in, in technique, like how, let something dry a bit or or not and uh, some of the paintings you know like this one uh, this big one here uh, I don't remember exactly but the blues the dark blues and almost purples and um, various shades of blue and, and almost lavender th that I, I did first and I did it pretty much all over, except I think on the top and the bottom, I think I painted a yellow band and a green band, and then I went into it, and maybe the blue came in later. It's, yeah, I'm pretty sure that the blue was secondary. So I, I painted that first. Anyway, I painted quite a bit of it, and I, I purposely let it dry overnight, or at least enough that it was uh, pretty, the surface dry. And then the big question for me at that point was, I can't remember if I smeared this red the second day or the first day, but I know I let this dry a bit, put the yellow on it. But the big, the big question for me was putting down this green. Um, I mean, it was looking really good just without that green. At the same time, I wanted to put these green lines again, sort of cross going against the direction that the horizontals go, more of a vertical. And you know, it's a bit of taking a chance. I thought I could ruin the painting very easily by it uh, not going out right, but it did. It went out, I poured it the way I wanted it to go. And then I worked on, you know, I'm not really sure, so, uh, you know, like this, I'm, I'm pretty sure that came on top. Same with this, this was later. Some of this that was going on here, I kind of covered up a bit more. I thought it was a little too strong. But that has, a, this painting had a lot to do with this letting it dry overnight. And there's a few paintings that are like that where I, I have let it uh, dry a bit. Um, yeah, and then this painting, I don't know, God, I worked on this painting, I don't know, quite a while, two or three major sessions. And um, again, just like this one, I really wanted to do a blue painting. I mean, that's what this one was about. With this one particularly, 
It was more about the fact that this ultramarine blue I've got is just beautiful. And I wanted to just do as much as I could of it. At the same time, I would just make it all ultramarine. There'd be some shades. This one was a little more like, well, let's just see what kind of blues you can get in here. And I wasn't, I wasn't really totally sure what I was doing. The interesting thing about this painting is I pretty much got it at one point. It was, it was going pretty well. As much as I had a lot of problems with this area right in here and this. And I did this two or three times before I got something that I liked. Um, this was interesting in that, you know, like one of these things where you just, you're, you're, you've painted something, it looks really good, but it's not quite right, or it's not quite there, and you don't know why. And I kept looking at it, it's a little hard to see, probably, but there's a shape here, there's two shapes, right here. And I literally mixed up this color again. I think I had a little bit of a round or whatever. Anyway, I painted out these two shapes. And that was the key to making this painting really pop for me. It was like, it was just a little too complex over there. Um, and there were a couple little things in the blue down below I took out. It was like a little too much going on. Um, you know, that's about it, you know. And this was a painting. I'm trying to remember what else went on with this one. This one came fairly easily compared to some of the others. Um, Maybe because I, I really wanted to keep it pretty blue. Why you know, the name? What's that? Why the name? Oh yeah, my Monet. Yeah, the name. Yeah, it's, it's uh, well when I got done with it. And this is an interesting thought. Um, I've been playing with some some configurations that do remind me, and it's not so much just remind me. I mean, I'm going after it. At the same time, I'm I don't know how far I really want to go with it. You know how close I want to get. But a lot of these configurations like this I saw as like water lilies. And at the same time, um, same time also the paint saves me kind of goes off somewhere. It doesn't look like what I really put down the first time. But I'll go back into it. So in this one I got pretty, I mean they, they really are kind of floating there like in that space and they're set up in a way you almost see them going back too. Like this is the bigger one; it's a medium and smaller. So there's a bit of that happening where it's 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 you know going back into space. Um, but when I got done with it, I was uh, you know I looked at it and I said, yeah, I don't know, I like it, but I don't know how close I really want to get. Same time, and and part of the reason is I, I, you know over the years, you know, like all the. I, I, I think just about every abstract painter I can think of at some point tried to paint a Monet water lilies with no success. You know, it just wasn't original or whatever. You know, you, you, could, you could say a lot of things about it, but, you know, they, they weren't really that, that uh, good. So I was kind of a little nervous about how far I really wanted to go with something like that because I thought, you know, historically speaking, I think of all this work that's been made trying to be like the water lilies and basically have been minor art. Um, anyway, this one too, you know, and again, you know, there's a, it, what people see a lot of, and, I, and I, it's funny because uh, it's, it, there's a lot of effects that I guess remind people of water. Um, I think I started off with the idea that I was going to paint skies, you know, it's just kind of interesting, like a, a, a blue, some object floating in the sky. And um, it's somehow, it's, maybe by the way I'm putting the paint down, it might have a lot to do with it, but um, the paintings really look more like they're about water, some kind of water, uh, you know, sense of water, or feeling of water. And this one, the same thing. Again, a lot of these configurations, kind of thinking of a water lily pad. At the same time, I'm not. And that's, you know, it's, it's a funny thing. Um, even putting something like right here up front, you know, kind of get yourself a, a space uh, that's up front, just the way that Monet would use, like, uh, I think those willow trees sometimes would hang in his paintings and then create a, a forward space. Then you'd have the, 
you'd sort of be looking into the water and you'd have a reflection of the sky above. And there's a little bit of that going on in this painting too. You know, it's, there's a, you know, it's something that I've uh, kind of been chasing for a while, um, making these shapes, particularly like this one. There's, there's a couple of them like this. It's sort of funny. I, I uh, you know, I do them. Sometimes they're really great success. I like the way they look. Sometimes I do them and I say, right, you want a mess and it doesn't really work out. And I do it over and over. And sometimes that turns into something really great because I keep just going at it. And finally I find something that I like. And that's, you know, a lot of what all these paintings are about is, is searching for something that I wouldn't really know how to say it, but it works. And it's what I'm after. The painting works in a way that I'm satisfied with and I like the look or I like the colors and, and that you know has a lot to do with when I feel it's done. Um, this is a painting called Tinkerbell and it's the largest painting in the show. Uh, it's an interesting painting for a lot of reasons. Uh, I, I had, you know, a very vague idea about what I was going to do. Part of it came out of looking at my floor over the years. Uh, there's been moments where the floor, I thought, looked better than my paintings. I mean, <laughs> as crazy as that sounds, <laughs> maybe it doesn't sound crazy, but there's a certain way the paint would go, sort of roll off the canvases uh, when I'm laying them on these uh, panels and run on the floor or I'd step in it and walk around and all the, uh, you know, just really not thinking about it, something very beautiful happens. And one of the things that always happens is it always be some very earth tone type colors. I mean, really dark browns, greens, uh, almost to the point of ugly. But then at the same time, with other paintings, maybe some bright colors got thrown in there on top or whatever. And it was really a beautiful combination. And I looked at it, you know, and other com combinations too. Sometimes just the drawing. So this was chasing after that. I literally, this one I didn't put on a panel and painted it on the floor. I did paint it on the floor, but I stapled it to the floor uh, with the idea that I was going to walk on it, which I did. And just try to, you know, kind of get that, uh, I don't know, that kind of mix that seemed to only happen when it just, I don't know, it's hard to explain, just sort of almost like you, you were doing a, you know, a, a, take a sponge or something, I guess you could do the same thing. But I, I walked around on it, but a lot of it was about, you know, just this one, like I, I poured, I poured out this big configuration, I think, first. And this was originally the bottom of the painting. And this was the top. And I worked on it with, you know, really, you know, getting this kind of greenish brown, purples, I don't know. I just, I just started putting colors in that I thought would turn kind of earth tony like colors. Uh, just it wasn't really 100% sure what kind of brown or green it would go to. But I, mean, I always refer to it as the brown painting, but it's really more green than brown. I have no idea why. And then playing that off with much brighter colors, along with the black. So that was kind of what this was about. And you know, it, it, it is quite beautiful. At the same time, I think it does have a bit of an edginess to it. Matter of fact, I think it has more than a bit. It's quite edgy. And at the same time, I think people like it too. It's sort of an interesting um, you know, combination of, of, of responses to the painting. Also, there was a whole thing I'd been doing with this, this area down in here. Uh, well, you might say more I've been seeing, which was the, the paint was running off the side of the canvases and it was, um, dripping down on the floor. And it would puddle out, and sometimes it would just kind of spread out almost like layers, you might say. And it was really, really cool, you know, and I kept thinking, why can't I pour something like that? I started realizing that some of it was, um, it, it was happening over time. It was like the drips were running off the edge of the canvas, 
they weren't running off all at once. They were sort of going like, you know, maybe one every, you know, few seconds or something. So what I did was I put a board across the painting, and I also wanted to kind of keep a straight, sense of straight line here. And I poured a bunch of stuff, and I just kept doing it, and I let it sit there for, I don't know, a few hours, and I just, you know, didn't have the patience to let it sit there forever, but, um, and then, you know, I worked on it with, you know, the, the idea of, like, this area here, particularly this kind of blotchiness that I, that literally was from walking around on it. And there were areas like this where, you know, it started off, I'm not 100% sure what I did, but I just remember, I think I was going to wipe it off, and then I, I did this, and I looked at it, and I said, oh, no, that looks really good. That's great. Just leave it. It's exactly what I was looking for. Um, and then, you know, I just play with it. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, at one point, there was some configuration in here that I painted out. Same over here. I actually added more uh, purple lines. As a matter of fact, I think some of these lines I painted with a brush up when it was already stable to the wall. I think. I'm pretty sure I did. Um, again, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a series of, of techniques. You know, there's things that you just, it's, it's, it's a hard, it's a hard thing to, to talk about because I'm going on really like a gut feeling, intuitiveness, and also a whole bunch of experience that I've gained in the last, say, five years, uh, working particularly with this, you know, enamel paint and what I've been after um, with the idea well let's put it this way there's, there's an idea not that it always goes that way I'd say easily half the time what I started out with isn't what I end up with and I think I think at least for me you have to adjust you 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 you, you do something you respond to it you do something else you respond to it um, I don't really have a plan, obviously, uh, and that's what it's about for me, and, and that's to really where the fun and the beauty is in making art, is like, is, is putting something down, doing something, responding to it, sorting it out. In some ways, like problem solving, you know, you're, you're looking at it and saying to yourself, okay, what does it need? Why isn't it working? How do you make something work? And then, you know, what are the rules of making something work? Do you want to break those rules? Are you going to use those rules? Um, what, you know, harmony, color sense, uh, you know, something looks beautiful, something looks ugly, something, you know, I mean, there's so many responses. Um, and all that stuff goes through my mind as I'm working on them. Uh, how, how to get it to that point where I'm feeling it's, you know, one, done, but also satisfied with the result. Actually, I, I wanted to come back to this painting that, in reference to that yellow painting that I called San Francisco Yellow. Because when I was talking about sometimes pouring something out uh, and I'm going to just smear it around and just kind of get rid of everything and see where it goes, this is one where I've just literally poured out yellow, red, yellow, red spots with the idea this painting was, you know, kind of became a lost cause at one point. And, um, you know, again, I stepped back and I said, well, don't, don't mix them together. Just see, just leave it. And I did, and, and there was a lot of other things I did and all that, but this is definitely a case of where these, these pores that were just more or less circles, um, I just left. And then later I kind of drew the, uh, the lines connecting them, which was sort of weird because um, I remember looking at it thinking, am I going to do this? I think I'm going to, I just, you know, it's funny how you just don't know something's telling you to do something. You're not quite sure why it needs it, but you do it. And that's what I did here. And I thought, I guess I was, I was a little nervous it was going to get a little kitschy, you know, because uh, obviously this sort of lollipop reference. Um, but I think it worked out. So, you know, it's, it's an interesting paint. It's certainly one of the more odder paintings in relation 
to the other paintings. Um, anyway, I just want to bring us over here for name. that. Name. Oh yeah, the name is, I can't even say it, but it's, it's actually a group. It's the Chlorettes. The Chlorettes were the all-female group, probably going back to the late 40s, right into the 60s. I think one of the longest lasting uh, groups ever that sang both lollipop, lollipop, and then it was, I think their first big hit was, Oh, Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, you know, obviously call it lollipops was, you know, just a little too. So I, I always like to have these little mystery titles, you know, like it's almost like a little, uh, what would you call it, puzzle or, or, or um, something you have to figure out, like a clue, you know, to the meaning of the painting or some connection to the painting. Not that the, there's really anything about the group or the, the uh, song that has anything to do with the painting. But uh, hey, this is sort of fun to do. Um, you know, I like this one, We're talking about titles. Uh, this one's Rich Banks and Solos. And in this case, it actually does have, uh, some degree, it's something to do with the, aesthetically, with the, the, the painting, because I was seeing what might be considered uh, the background as really like a, a van, you know, they're putting down this van, they call it. It's kind of like a, a repeated rhythm, and I think it is at least. <laughs> and then the, the riffs and the little things that happen, in, you know, here and there, like, you know, maybe this right in here, or the way this yellow kind of is going that way, or this line, yellow line, and there's this kind of zzz right here. And then the solos are like these shapes that are kind of floating on top of the uh, vamps or the background. Um, so that was kind of, you know, in the matter of you, you mentioned when they were talking about this blue light, it said it sort of reminded you of like a sound, what do you call it, uh, I guess on a graft or some little sound wave and uh, how it looks, I guess. And, you know, not that I was trying to do that, but there it is, you know. So, um, and then, you know, being like this, I mean, again, it's, there's uh, layers, you know, and I'm just working on it. One, on this one, I was trying to very consciously make a yellow painting, but the, the depth and stuff, I mean, there's a lot of this, you see right here, going on in the whole painting, and eventually I took most of it out, Except, you know, this is probably one, that one corner. So, yeah, you know, that's kind of the, the title does have something to do with this one in some senses. Um, where should we go to next? Are we going to the blue ones? Or are we going to the black? Let's go to the black paint. Yeah, let's go to the black paint. Yeah. So these two paintings are both I like, call black paintings. One's uh, this is black painting number three, and this is black painting number two. Now I don't have particularly good titles for these, but I just couldn't come up with anything else. I just I did three of them. The first one was very much a painting that I would call kind of a cover-up painting, where. Um, Again, I was painting on the damn thing for days. And I, matter of fact, I came home from uh, Richie Temperio's, I think, a Thanksgiving dinner. And uh, was it Thanksgiving? It couldn't have been. Well, anyways, it was, some, it was a dinner at Richie's, a bunch of people. And I remember I walked in the studio, I was somewhat dressed up. I got up on the ladder and I looked at it and I went, oh. I was well, it's not one of these paintings. And I looked at it and I thought, oh God, this thing, it's just, it just ain't making it. And again, the same attempt. Eventually, I'm gonna make one of these paintings work, these sort of continuous line paintings or something. But I just changed my clothes. I got out a gallon of black 
and I think I put uh, maybe a quart or two, a quart probably, a flat black in it, maybe even a little blue just to kind of do something to it, see what happens. Started smearing around the painting again, I was sort of digging into it because you know it's like you know, probably a quarter inch deep at that point. And bang, I started seeing stuff that was really working for me, basically taking out what I didn't like. That turned into me painting this one, but much more with the idea that it would stay very black. I didn't really do a cover-up kind of thing on this one at all. This one was actually quite different. It was, I don't remember exactly everything I did to start it, but there was probably a lot more of what was going on down the bottom, and I knew that at some point I would edit it out. And at one point right in here, I don't exactly remember what I had, but I didn't like it. I remember it was kind of funny. I, I scraped it all off into a bucket because it was just getting too much paint on the floor and I, I just didn't want to track it everywhere. So I scraped it into this bucket and um, gallon, a big gallon can. And then I looked at the color and I went, who poured it right back on? And I said, here we go. <laughs> that does it. And then I came back in, you know, like this black, kind of almost very dark. And there's, a, there's quite a bit of... Um, subtle things happening in this painting where this black is, I'm not exactly sure anymore what was in there, but let's just say a touch of white or another color lightened it a bit. So this black, which is straight out of the can, uh, in the right light, reads as, as a line. And, you know, it's doing all this drawing. Same with this kind of shape here. Initially there, I don't remember exactly how the shape looked, but there was just a, a, a purple spot. And this shape just kind of drifted over into it and morphed in. And I looked at it and at first I was like, oh damn, what happened to that purple? And then I went, hey, that looks really cool. So that's one of these things where, you know, just kind of an accident and I just left it. Um, you know, like in here, there's, there's, there's a straight out of the can black against I can kind of see a little purple in here, maybe even green. So it's not totally black black. It's like, I wouldn't exactly call it charcoal, but remember I'm looking in the slide, I can see a little green in that black. And then I, I poured out of this sort of dark green at one point, and um, it's kind of interesting, but it isn't quite, I wanted it to be a little stronger. And again, it's not one of these where the paint had dried enough, I went back with, uh, I don't know where even this color came from. I mixed it up. I'm not sure which color that is, uh, but I darkened it. And I poured it out, kind of this line with some spots. I thought, oh yeah, that's, that, that works, you know. And just like this, you know, this blue. One time I don't remember what I had here, a bunch of blue, kind of almost like a grid or something. And I, you know, took most of it out, left like the yellow down there just a little bit. That little blue spot I put in later, um, you know, it's, you know it's probably you're not going to see the camera, but there's a kind of swirly, like black line there. There, you know, it's like you gotta, right, gotta get off. Like in this light right now, you gotta have to get off to the side to truly see the main. It's an interesting main in that even that brownish sort of V-like thing at the top. Your first take on it, it's, not, it's almost like it's not even there. And then you sort of look at it for a minute and you go, oh yeah, look at that. And then you start seeing all the other stuff. I mean, there's some purple in there, there's some greens. Um, but, and I like doing these black ones, I should do more. But again, you know, this is, uh, as far as uh, anyone showing it, that's one of the things I liked about uh, doing this Westbeth show was that, you know, I'm, I'm my own curator and no one, uh, I picked the show and that, the, these were these were two paintings that had been left out on my other shows that definitely were going in. Uh, matter of fact, I, I wanted to dedicate a room to them. Uh, originally, I was thinking I put all three black ones in, or the green one that's in the other room. But the wall here wasn't as big as I thought it was from the diagram, so that kind of threw us a little bit. But I think it's you know it's it's right. You know these are these are the two strongest ones anyway. So. That worked out. This one, of course, yeah, it's funny about this painting. Um, 
after I did it, this was the last one I did. And I, in, in, a, in a weird way, I was a little disappointed in it because I was really going after this thing, like follow up on it. And it didn't go that way, you know. And, I, and, and matter of fact, on this one, I used a lot of brush in this one. Uh, probably one of the few paintings that, you know, maybe 30% of it I brushed somehow. Uh, I started painting it, and, you know, even doing these lines that kind of outline this pink shape, you know, it was another one of those. There's something telling me to do that. Don't know why. But I did it, and I thought it really worked out well. Um, and it's just like down at the bottom here, this sort of band. Or a lot of people see it as a shelf, but it kind of does have that feeling. It sort of looks like all those spots and those, those little pointless drip-like things are there. What happened was, as I was working on the painting, at one point, backing up, I, that, this was the part that literally went over the, the panel on the floor. And I kept looking at it saying, I think that's going to have to be in the painting. And I didn't really know. So when the painting was done, I said to him, okay, I took it off the panel, I laid it on the floor and I taped it out. And I taped the whole thing out like this. And I thought, yeah, it looks great, put it up on the wall. I said, well, worst comes to worst, I'll just take it. Cross, but I think it, it uh, looks it, it, it worked really well um, and you know at one point of consciously playing it up uh, to, to make this it's almost like an imaginary line it's like a line being created by what's not there so that was kind of interesting in some places I did paint the, the edge just to kind of emphasize that that uh, horizontal line um, yeah, it's interesting painting. First got done with it. Strange way it reminded me of Matisse's, I think it was called the Moroccans. Not my favorite painting by Matisse, as much as uh, parts of it are fantastic. But um, something about this shape up here, and I don't know, maybe the black and the pink. It's hard to say. But uh, yeah, it's. It, it's interesting painting and what I liked about it was again there's a lot of drawing going on in it which uh, some is somewhat subtle uh, but it's, it's there and that's something I've been pushing a lot of is uh, you know uh, how to bring in this kind of drawing convincingly and not neutralize everything which is pretty much what everybody's been doing since Pollock um, at the same time how far do you go with it? And that's, you know, you can get crazy. I mean, there's, there's, I can't even think of the names of this, you know, abstract artists are trying to paint things that look like old masters and it's just awful, you know? Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, anyway, what else we got? Should we go in the other room? Yeah, let's take a look at that green. So this, this is a painting that um, started off, I don't remember exactly what the color thing was. At first I thought it was getting too dark, um, but what I did try to do, and it kind of stayed in the painting, was I wanted to really put out a big sort of field of very liquidy paint and have this sense of layers or depth or just flowing. And so, uh, you know, again, got in there with mixing the paint around, and I think I had various configurations that I painted out and painted in uh, with the sort of these, these shapes with the idea that they're floating, you know, it's kind of like what you said, Jeffrey, about that, that blue in that corner. It's sort of interesting. It, it tends to kind of creep up on you, like you realize how blue that corner really is a little later. And, and when I saw that, I kind of started playing it up, which was I started making little things a little more bluer and spraying it out, but not too much because I liked the subtlety of it. Same time, it was interesting to get this blue, and you got on this side of the green, and then the white. Again, I'm 
pretty sure that white, when I poured that white out, I was going to mix it in because I thought the painting was too dark. I didn't want to go that dark. And I poured it out, and maybe I you know, did some swiping around it, and then I went, no, no, don't mix this thing in. Just leave that. And then later, I added this one. Just kind of a balance. I felt it might be a little too isolated as much as I think your eye tends to go to that one real fast. But, you know, and then, you know, like even in here, I took a stick. There was a series of, I don't know, greens and what have you. And again, I took this, this, this color green, this sort of grayed out green, came from some other painting. And I really thought it was cool. So I, I scooped it up off the floor, in this case, put it in a bucket, put a lid on it. So I'm gonna, I know I'm going to use that green someday. And this I just kind of mixed around. Almost, almost looks like a paisley pattern in a way. But again, it's very liquidy and very fluid, and now it's kind of frozen, you know. 